Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I am Muhammad Akram, coordinator of development and quality unit in College of Computer Science and Information System. Today I am going to discuss how we can prepare a course file. Our main discussion will be on the number of binders that we have to prepare at the end of the semester. Our agenda for today's discussion will be that what is course file and what are the contents of course file and why we need a course file, who is responsible to prepare course file and who is responsible to review the course file and what are the binders of course file. So we will start our discussion from what is a course file Course file is actually a sketch. It is a sketch or blueprint of teaching activities undertaken in the semester on timelines. So as a course instructor, course instructor perform different type of teaching activities during the semester. So course file reflect what are the activities course instructor have performed during the whole semester Course file define what is the objective of the courses, what is the objective of the course, and selecting and arranging the subject matter. Course file also explain about what are the different methods and procedure for delivery and assessment, because the delivery, course delivery, and course assessment, it is very important component of our course, course file. So course file is also a fundamental component for academic quality assurance to assure the quality of our courses. So course file plays a vital role. So we have three things here, the learning objective, we have activity design and we have assessment. So course file contain the record of all these things. Course file is also a documented evidence of proposed plan of study and it contains the instru instructional activities and achievement of course learning outcome and all supporting resources. So this is actually a documented evidence that is prepared at the end of the semester. Course file need to be placed in a central location where it is easily available to all faculty members. Okay, so course file is prepared at the end of every semester by the course instructor. Okay, so we will discuss about the main contents of the course file. A course file have a cover page. A course file have a course specification. A course file have a course report, course file have course syllabus, course file have the information about the different assessment materials. For example, if the course instructor have conducted assignment, quizzes, project, midterm exam, final exams, and so on. Course file also contain the sample of student work. Okay, so this should also include the best student average marks and the worst marks achieved by a student. Also, the course file contain the course learning outcome assessment report because the main objective of the course instructor is to achieve the course learning outcome of his course. Also, the course uh, file contain the instructional material, for example, the lecture slide, notes, references, and everything. And also the course file contain the student feedback about the course in form of survey. So we have two type of assessment, direct assessment and indirect assessment. And survey is a type of indirect assessment. So we will discuss in coming slide the difference between direct and indirect assessment. So why we need the course file? The course file, 
is having many advantages and some of them I have mentioned here that course file document, document all the activities at the course level. The course file contain the sample of student works. Okay. So we have documented in course file all the material related to the assessment methods. The course file also present the CLO assessment and achievement of the students. Course file also contain the improvement plan that contain the list of action to improve the quality of program. Also, the course file support the accreditation process. We can use the course file whenever we will apply for the Abbott accreditation or for NCTPLE accreditation. And there are many other benefits that we can get from the course file if it is prepared at the end of the semester. Now, who is the responsible to course prepare the course file and who is responsible to review the course file? As we know that for each course, if it is offered in male or female section, there is a course coordinator. So uh, we will see that who, when the course instructor have to prepare the course file, at the end of the semester, the course instructor is responsible to prepare the course file and then he will submit the course file to the course coordinator. The course coordinator will be review the course, all the binders of the course file and then he will write his comments and he will also fill the checklist form and then he will give his comments to the course instructor and course instructor will update the course file according to the comments given by the course coordinator. So this is a cycle until the course coordinator will satisfy, satisfy with the course file and at the end the updated version of course file will be uploaded onto the course file system. Now what are the course file binder? We have total nine binder and first binder talk about the journal information. Binder number two discuss about the lecture handouts. Binder number three discuss about the lab activities. And this binder is only for the courses. Those have lab section for only three courses. So this binder did not need to complete only the course instructor have to put that this binder is not applicable. Binder number four that discuss about the tutorial activities. Binder number five contain all the quizzes, exam, lab exam, final exam uh, data. Binder number six have all the information about the assignments given by the course instructor to the students. Binder number seven is having the information or data related to the surveys. And binder number eight contain the NCAA course specification. And binder number nine contain the course report. So we will discuss one by one what data we need to fill to complete all these nine binders. So first binder, we are going to discuss that is binder number one and that is general information. In binder number one, general information, the first thing we need to include that is course syllabus. We need to include the second thing in general uh, binder number one, that is assessment plan. We have to add the third thing in binder number one, that is teaching load. And the fourth thing we need to add here, attendance sheet. So we will have uh, one example. We will see one example that how we can complete these four things in binder number one. So I'm going to open the course file, one sample course files. And you can see here that we have total nine binders, binder one that is about the general information. So I have opened the binder number one. In binder number one, first thing we have the cover page of this binder. And as you can see here, that 
this is a template that is approved by the college and all the course instructor have to follow the same template to complete the all the binders of the course file so first you have to mention here the degree that is a bachelor and then major that is a computer science for information system courses we need to write here information system then we have to mention the section or campus this course report sample is from male campus so i have written here male campus and if it is far from the female campus we have to write here female campus then next we need to write the course code and then course name and then this course report is for which semester so this is for second semester 2020 2021 and then we have the binder one general information so this is the cover page we will find this cover page in all the binders so what is the next thing as i said that we need the four thing in binder one the first one is course syllabus assessment plan, teaching load, and attendance sheet. So we will see one by one what is course labels. So if I go down, then the first thing we need to put here is course labels. So course labels contain the information about the course. So first section in the course labels is general information. So we have to put here the code title, which is the section. We have the credit hour, how many credit hour this course. We have to put here the location. We have to put the time of the class and day of the class. If there is any prerequisite, we have to mention here. We have to mention here the location, the tutorial location, the tutorial time we have to mention here. We have to mention here the lab location. As I said, if your course is having the lab, then you have to uh, put here your lab which is assigned to you otherwise if it is only theory course you have to write here not applicable then we have to mention here lab time if it's your lab course if you have the course website we have to put here we have the instructor name who is going to teach this course what is the office location of the instructor what is the office hour okay we need to mention and who is the coordinator of this course we need to mention then who the name of and email of the course instructor we need to mention and if the lab instructor is different than the theory teacher then we have to mention here number two in course labels this is talk about the course description what is the description of the course and one important thing number three that is course learning outcomes as you can see here this course is having six course learning outcomes and the second column shows about the linkage of our course learning outcome with our SOs or PLOs SOs we use the term student outcome or SOs for Abbott and we use the term program learning outcome or PLOs for NCAA. Okay. The third, fourth thing that we have to mention here, the learning resources. What are the learning resources we need? We need the textbook or other references. At number five in course labels, explain about the course content. So this will be the weekly breakdown of the topics that we are going to cover during the semester. Then number six, the last section of course labels is evaluation scheme. So we have to mention here the uh, method that we are going to use, for example, for quiz, and we need to mention the weightage out of 100%, how much weightage for the quiz, how much for the midterm exam, how much for the labs and final exams, okay? So as we know that if your course is a theory course, then your uh, final exam will be 50%, but for the lab courses, the final theory exam will be 40%. The second thing in the binder one, we need to uh, include that is assessment plan. So assessment plan, we have the assessment plan. As I said, we will have the quizzes, we have midterm exam, lab exam, and so on. 
so it is clearly mentioning if quizzes are 10 percent as it is mentioned here that we have the quizzes that is 10 percent so how many quiz i'm going to conduct so i have uh, quiz number one this is five percent quiz number two this is five percent so this is the assessment plan i have to mention midterm exam it will be 30 percent lab assignment i have to include it is five percent mid lab exam it will be five percent then final lab exam that is 10 percent and final theory exam it is 40 percent so this example is taken from the course that is having lab section also so according to your course you have to give the assessment plan so next also you need to mention that in this assessment methods you are going to assess which course learning outcome as you can see here that quiz number one that i have here it is going to assess the clo number one similarly quiz number two it's going to assess clo number three similarly for all the assessment method i have given the detail that which assessment method is going to assess which course learning outcome so we need to mention here then i have need to mention here what is the t third thing in binder number one the teaching load so all of us we have this uh, teaching load so we need to scan this and we have to put in the, our course file then the number four that is the attendance sheet we have to uh, put here the attendance sheet in this form or another way that we can take the attendance sheet if from the blackboard if it is online classes so we can put the soft copy of the attendance sheet in this folder so these are the four two things uh, two files we have to we have to include into the into the binder number one now we will move to our uh, binder number two that is related to the lecture handouts in lecture handouts we need to include the first thing that is summary of what is delivered in the class and the second thing we need to provide the soft copies of weekly notes and handouts so we will see uh, actually the, we will go to the example binder too and we will see what we have to add here so you can see here the binder too that is handouts and if I click this, so first thing, I have the cover page for binder two. And similarly, like binder one, we have to provide here the degree, we have to provide here the major, we have to provide the campus, male campus or female campus, we have to provide here the course code, course name and semester. And then at the end, we have, this is binder two lecture handouts. So this template, it is approved by the college and everyone have to use same same template so we have now provide the two things in this binder the first thing is we have to give here the summary on what is delivered in the class the second thing we have to provide the soft copy of weekly notes or handouts that is distributed to the students on the weekly basis so here you can see that we have written the summary on what is delivered in the class so in this course main topic covered during the lecture hour so we have to add here all the topics that we are going to discuss during our whole semester so it can be one to two pages all the total number of uh, topics that we have discussed so this is the summary then we have to provide the second thing the soft copy of weekly lecture notes or handouts so for these lecture notes and handouts you can make a separate folder like so lecture slides so you can see here the lecture slide for week number one two three four and so on so we can put here the lecture notes so after this we will move to the our binder number three that is that is the lab activities in lab activities uh, that is related to only the courses those have the lab uh, power for the theory courses they just can add here it is not applicable so what we need to add here 
that is summary of what is delivered in the lab and the soft copies of weekly lab activities. So we will see the example uh, from the course. So this is our binder number three, the lab material. In this, we have the first file that is cover page for the lab. So we have to put here similar in all the binder, we need this cover page to be included for each course. So we have uh, same information, we have the degree, we have the program name, computer science or information system, we have to mention here the campus, male or female, course code, course name, semester and the binder name. This is binder three, lab activities. Okay, so then we have actual binder, what we need in this binder, we need the first thing, the summary on what is delivered in the lab. And we need to add the soft copies of your weekly lab activities. So uh, summary, I we can put in any way, but I have put in the table that the serial number one, that it means this is our lab number one, that, and then the lab title, lab number two, then the title. So we have to mention here all the labs which we are going to give to the student on weekly basis. Then we have to provide the soft copy of lab activities. So for this, I have make a separate folder that is lab manual. So you can see here the lab manual number one, lab manual number uh, two, three, four, and so on. So we have the different lab manuals uh, we have prepared. And as you can see that in lab manual, we have the objective and learning outcome of the lab objective learning outcome then some introduction, what we are going to do in this lab. And then we have the lab exercise problems given to the students, okay, to perform during the lab session. Okay, so this we need to mention in this, uh, we need to add the data. And if you have any, any of the data uh, about the lab homework or assignment, so you can put all the data related to the labs in this folder. After this, we will move to the binder number four, that is tutorial activities. So most of the courses, they are having the tutorial. So we have to put the tutorials in this form, tutorial number one, we have to uh, provide the set of problems and we have to provide the solutions and so on. So it is recommended that we should have one tutorial in one, sem uh, one week. So let's have a look that actual course file that contains some tutorial. So this is binder number four. We have the tutorial. First, we need to provide the cover page. Similarly, like we have seen in previous binders, then we have the uh, tutorials, how many tutorial we have conducted Let's suppose in this course, there are 10 tutorials and we have to provide the tutorial problems and the solution. So you can see here, there is a separate folder for tutorials. These are tutorial number one to 10. And these, the second folder contain the solution solved. Okay, this is also needed to upload into the course file. So this is our binder number four. And after that, we have the binder number five and that binder contain the data about all our quizzes, exam, lab exam, final projects, or if you have, uh, sorry, final exam, or if you have uh, 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 projects or anything that is related to uh, exams, you have, you can put in binder number five. So what is first thing? We have quizzes, we have midterm exam, also, we can put here the midterm makeup exam, if any. If you have a makeup exam, you have to put here. We can put here lab exam. This is only for lab courses. We can put here the final theory and lab exam. And now let's see that one example from a course file. So this is our binder number five, okay, exam. So we have uh, following folders and files. The first file, that is cover page for our binder number five. So similarly, we have the same cover page and just it is changed here, the binder name. 
after that we have to put here the <clears throat> we have to put here the quizzes we have here midterm one we have midterm two we have midterm makeup exam and we have lab exam and we have final exam okay so one by one we will see what we need to put here in quizzes let's suppose if i go to quizzes in this course there was two quizzes quiz number one and quiz number two so we can see here what we have added here in quiz number one first thing we need to add here what is the questions what is the quiz questions we have to provide the solution of the questions we have to provide the marking scheme a rubric for complex question if there is any complex or difficult question so we can also include the rubric if it is uh, needed we have to add here the student grades and we have to add here the sample of student work we have to add the uh, marks of best student okay average and worst okay so we will see one by one quiz number one that was out of two marks so questions so we have put it the question as you can see quiz number one questions are available in the folder name quiz and solution so if we see the folder so you can see here that quizzes and solutions so we have in this uh, uh, course there are two quizzes this is quiz okay, quiz number one so we have the questions and also the solution solved quiz is also uploaded into the binder file so for each assessment we have to add all these things okay so and then we have sample solution we have marking scheme so you can see here because the quiz number one did not have any complex question so there is no need of rubric so if you have any complex question so you can add the rubric if it is uh, not a complex question so you no need of a marking scheme after that we have to mention here the student grade so you can see here that i have added the student grade student id name and the uh, marks he has achieved from the quiz for if it is computer science student and also i have in this course information system student so we have to add this information for all the all the things and you can see here the uh, next thing is sample of student work so you can see here that best grade i have scanned the result and i have put it here this is the best grade and then we have the average grade so you can see here the average grade and then i have put it here the low grade that is worst you can say this is also mentioned here so then similarly for quiz 2 we need to add the question sample solution marking scheme student grades and sample of student work so for each assessment either it is quiz it is exam or midterm exam or final exam so we need to add following five things so you can see here everything we have documented here the student grades for everything and best student average student and so on so if i go to let's suppose this is some exam this is midterm uh, one exam okay so we have added the results of this is the best grade okay so 14 out of 15 so all the <coughs> excuse me so we have added all the information in this after that in this uh, uh, we we you can see here that we make a separate folders for this this is sample student work so we have the sample student work for the students for each assessment for final lab exam for final theory exam for first midterm exam so you can see here the average marks best marks and low marks so we have uh, added everything and this is the record and we have uploaded in the course file so for all the uh, assessment method we have the record for the best student and sample student work and suppose this is midterm exam and solution 
so we have midterm exam first midterm and then solve second midterm and the solution of second midterm and so on so all the information that uh, related to exams we have to add it here so for each assessment it is very important for each assessment method following should be available into the into the soft copy that questions of your assessment method sample solution number 3 the marking scheme you have to provide if it is for only complex question we have to give the student grades you have to provide the sample of the student work in term of best average and worst marks okay so this is our binder number 5 now we will move to our binder number 6 that is related to the assignment in assignment you need to include the following data the questions that you have prepared for the assignment you have to add the sample solution you have to add the marking scheme for the complex question you have to add the student grades and you have uh, so these are the four main things we need to add in this binder so let's see a the example of from the course file so this is binder 6 assignment and projects so you if you have any project in your course so you can add the information also in this binder so we need first thing that is cover page similar to the previous for, uh, binder so we have the cover page we have binder 6 so let's suppose i have the assignment number 1 in this i have given the question sample solution marking scheme student grade and sample of the student work so question assignment number 1 questions so question um, uh, assignment 1 questions are available in the folder named assignment detail and solution so if we go to the course file uh, sorry if we go to the binder 6 assignment so we can see here that this is assignment detail and solution so we have assignment 1 and 2 this is solved and this is assignment 1 2 that is the actual assignment that is given to the student okay so these are the related to the assignment and also if you have a grading rubric so you can put here the rubric also and also if the you have the assignment submitted by the student in soft copy so you can put here in the folder that assignment this is the response of the of the students against the assignment so this is our binder number 6 that we have in our next we have uh, to put the sample of the student work as i said now we will go to the our binder number 7 binder number 7 is related to the surveys okay so as i said we have two type of assessment direct assessment and indirect assessment uh, survey is a form of indirect assessment in survey we need to add the number 1 the course learning outcome survey number 2 we have to add the data about the response of the student in the clo survey and we have to put the student online survey so let's have a look in the course file how we can put this bad data so binder number 7 that is related to survey if i open this the first thing that is cover page that is similar to the previous binder we need to put the cover page for this binder then we have the file <clears throat> that have the information which is needed here the first thing is course learning outcome survey we have to put here the response of the student in the clo survey and we have to put here the student online survey so if we go next the first thing is course learning outcome survey in course learning outcome survey we, every course have a survey that course instructor have to distribute at the end of the semester and let's this is example of operating system course this is clo survey so you can see here the clos are written in first column and then student they are going to fill this information if 
they are strongly agree with the, uh, see this course learning outcome or agree or neutral or disagree or strongly disagree. So this is first information. Then the response of the student in CLO survey, we need to also scan and we have to upload into the course file. So in binder seven, so as you can see here, this is the folder student CLO survey response. So this is the response from the student. They have filled the CLO survey and we have to scan all the survey and we have to put here. After this, the th last thing we need to uh, include in the binder number seven, that is student evaluation online survey. The student have to fill. So you can see here for this course, there was three section that was theory, lab and tutorial. So students, they have filled the online survey. So we have to, we can download this survey from the EduGate and we can put it here. And this survey contain the information about the student evaluation about the course. Okay, so this is our binder number seven. So after that, we will move to our binder number eight, that is NCAA course specification. So as we know that we have a template and we have to fill this template uh, in the start of the semester. So course specification is normally prepared in the start of the semester. So we will look that how we can fill the NCAA course specification. So this is our binder number eight. In this binder, we have the cover page. The cover page is similar like the previous binder. So we need to add the cover page for this binder. And this is our course specification that is prepared for the course, which is operating system. So here, this template is the uh, template which is uh, given by NCAA in 2018. But we have the up-to-date template that is 2020. So we have to use that template to prepare the course specification. So course specification, you can see the first page that is contain the information about the course title, course code, program, department, college and institution. And then it is having the contents we need to fill from A to H. So A explain about the course identification. So course identification contain the credit hours that how many credit hour this course, this is three credit hour, two or four. So we have to mention here. Then we have to mention here the course type. This course is university required course or college required course or department required course. And then we have to mention here, this is required or elective. But in our uh, curriculum, we have all the required courses. So number three, we need to mention in course identification, the level or year at which the course is offered. So this course is offered in year three, level six. So if this course is having any prerequisite, so we can mention here. And if it is having any co-prerequisite, so we have to mention here, but this course did not have any co-prerequisite. So we have written not applicable. The sixth, we have to uh, fill it here, that is mode of instruction. So what is the mode of instruction? We have traditional classroom that is face-to-face. -face. So this course specification is prepared when there was no online classes. So, so it total have 75 contact hours. So 100% that is traditional classroom. If it is blended, because nowadays we have many courses, they are blended some online and uh, offline, it is mixed. So we have to mention here that how much we are going to for blended. Then uh, we have number seven, actual learning hours. So we need to mention here that how many hours there will be lectures, how many hours will be for labs, how many hours will be for tutorials and what is the total. So this is 75. This 75 and here we mention the 75 contact hours should be same. Then we have some other learning hours we can mention here for study, for assignment, for library. So it is 45 because this course is 
three credit hours. So the contact hours total can be learning hour can be 120. So if you add this 75 and 45, it will be 120. So if course will be two credit hours, so then maximum learning hours will be 40. Okay. So for each credit hour, the learning hours will be 40. Uh, sorry, 80 in case of two credit hours. So if our course is for four credit hours, then learning hour will be 160. Then section B that is discuss about the course objective and learning outcome. So this is the course description we have to mention here. We have to mention here course main objective. So these are our course learning outcomes. Number three, we need to mention here the uh, our course learning outcome belongs to which learning domain. For example, if you see here, these are the three course learning outcome. They belong to the knowledge level and three belongs to the skills learning domain, but we did not have any course learning outcome that belong to competence. So it depends course to course that some courses also have their uh, alignment of their courses with the competence knowledge domain. This column explain about that our course learning outcome is aligned with which PLO, program learning outcome. Then we have the course contents. What are the course contents we need to mention here? For example, in this uh, first, I have written introduction, history, evaluation of operating system, type of operating system, and so on. So how many contact hours need to complete this? So I have written here uh, 10 and then total I have to mention here and should be 75 because 75 I have mentioned in our total contact hours. So it should not be less, it should not be more in the course specification. After that, section D explain about teaching and assessment. So we have our course learning outcome, which are aligned with our learning domain. For example, this is first course learning outcome. So what are the teaching strategies that I'm going to use to uh, achieve this learning outcome? And what are the assessment method I'm going to use to assess this learning outcome? As I said, we have two assessment method, indirect and direct. Indirect that is our student CLO survey and direct are actually we are conducting the quiz assignment, midterm exams, lab exam, final exam. So these are the all our direct assessment methods. So for each course learning outcome in the course specification, we need to mention the teaching strategies that we are going to use to uh, achieve the these course learning outcomes. So you can men, uh, see here, that in knowledge level, we have three course learning outcomes, three course learning outcome in the knowledge level. And here, this is our course learning outcome number one. We have mentioned the teaching strategies and assessment method. For number two, we have mentioned the strategies and assessment method. For course learning outcome number three, we have mentioned the strategies and assessment method. Similarly, in the second learning domain skills, I have three course learning outcome. The course learning outcome is mentioned. And then in next column, teaching strategies. And uh, next we have the assessment method. After this, the next thing is assessment task for the student. So how many quizzes I am going to uh, include in this course to assess the student? How many assignment? what is the week due so we have to mention here and then the percentage of total assessment score we have to mention here so all our assessment method we need to mention here okay so this is assessment method plan start of the semester but if it is any change due to some uh, uh, other issues like when we have was having the covid and due to this we update our assessment method. So it is also mentioned here. Then the section E is discussed about the student academic counseling and support, how we are going to provide the counseling and support to the student. So we have to mention here 
how we are going to provide the counseling facility and services to the student then section f the learning resources which is the book that we need which is the reference book which we need to uh, complete this course other facilities what we need we need to mention here that we have we need classroom labs whatever we need we need to mention in this column then how we are going to check the course quality okay so we have uh, uh, evaluation areas so we who is going to test this that is evaluator and what is the evaluation method okay so we need to mention for this course and then the last that is specification approval data and for each course uh, specification should be approved from the department council and uh, it's need to mention here the date of approval and the reference number and one thing it is very important that course specification is prepared at the start of the semester so after this we will move to our last binder that is course report course report uh, need to include the following data the first thing that is course learning outcome assessment data we need to add in the binder 9 clo achievement by student grade and clo surveys and we need to add the achievement of uh, program learning outcome or student outcome using clo achievement we need to add the nctaa course report so uh, the first thing that is course learning outcome assessment data so what is uh, course learning outcome assessment data we have first thing that course learning outcome assessment data include the assessment which is done by the two method as i said we have the direct assessment that is student evaluation by conducting the exams and so on and we have the indirect assessment by surveys we have clo surveys course learning outcome survey that is distributed by the course instructor at the end of the semester so this is indirect assessment so we need to add this information in binder 9 for direct assessment uh, we have to fill the excel sheet for clo assessment the uh, our uh, college already have prepared one excel file as a course instructor you just have to fill the information in the course file and at the end you will see the report that will be the clo achievement report so this is direct assessment for indirect assessment we have to distribute the course survey to the student and we have to calculate the result of clo achievement result achievement result so we need to prepare the report okay so uh, achieve to test the achievement so in both the cases the target benchmark is 65% so if 65% student achieved the then we will say the course learning outcome is achieved so let's have a look that what we have uh, in the binder 9 so in binder 9 course report the first thing we have the cover page and cover page is similar like the previous binder we have to add the cover page then we have the binder 9 and that is very important so we need to add the clo assessment data we need to add the clo achievement by student grade and clo survey we need to add the achievement of student outcome using clo uh achievement and we have to add the nc triple a course report okay so we will see one by one the clo assessment data so we have first need to add how many students okay so this we have to fill the excel file and just we have to take the screenshot and we have to put here or another way you can put the excel file itself Okay, so maybe the Excel file is also here. So you can see this is the Excel file that you have to complete. For example, this is the first page. You need to put the student information. Then you have to put what are the course learning outcomes. You have you have to put here the uh, quizzes. This is the page for quizzes. You have how many quizzes and how many questions and these questions are aligned with which course learning outcome 
so you have to put the marks for the students similarly you have to put the marks for assignment if you have assignments as you can see so you can put the uh, midterm marks you can put the marks for the final exam if you have lab also you can put the marks for lab if it is homework or lab mid lab exam or assignment so you can put the marks here then at the end you will get this report automatically as you can see here that it was having six course learning outcomes and this is the achievement okay so uh, we have prepared already separate video to explain how we can fill this excel file to get the these results so what you have to do after that you have to put all this this is your assessment data you need to put in this file about the quizzes about the assignment as you can see this is for midterm exam this is for final exam you can put in this file or just you can copy that excel file you already have filled and put in binder number 9 then clo achievement by student grade and clo survey so we have this is the report you can see here this is the report this there was only five students and it shows that how many clos are achieved or how many clos are not achieved so what is our target here that is 65% and you can see here that clo1 achievement is 60% so it means this clo is not achieved CLO2 achievement is 80%. So this CLO is achieved because it is more than 65%. CLO3 is also achieved. CLO4, that is 40%. So it means this is also not achieved. CLO5, it is 100%. So it means this is achieved. CLO6 also it is 100%. So this is also achieved. Okay. So after that, we have the student CLO survey report. So as I said, we need to distribute the survey to the student and then we have to prepare, fill this table that for six course learning outcome. So we have received the response from the five students, three students for course learning outcome. One, they say this is strongly agree and two students, they say they are agree. Similarly for CLO2, three students, they say strongly agree, two say they are agree for course, course learning outcome number three. Three students, they say we are strongly agree. One said we is agree, and but one student, he said disagree. Then we have calculated the average. Okay, so uh, now for this uh, CLO survey, and you can see here the summary of achievement. So this is achievement based on the survey. And this is the achievement based on the student performance. So we can see here that CLO number one, that is achieved in term of survey response, but it is not achieved in term of student actual performance. As you can see here, this is the actual performance. And you can see that CLO number one, it is achievement result is 60%. It did not fulfill the benchmark of 65, so it, this CLO is not achieved. CLO 4 is also not achieved, so 2, 3, 5, and 6 are achieved. We have to fill it here that you can see the number 1 and number 4. CLO 4, in term of student performance, they are not achieved. 2, 4, uh, 2, 3, 5, and 6, they are achieved. But in term of student survey, it is achieved. So in student survey, uh, we have to check the result if this is more than 2.75 or minimum 2.75. So we can say the students uh, on the base of student survey, the CLO is achieved. So this is the criteria we have to consider in our mind if this average is greater than or equal to 2.75 so we will say the clo is achieved after that we have to uh, mention here the achievement of our program learning outcome or student outcome using clo achievement as i said that each course learning outcome is aligned with our program learning outcome so as you can see here the clo1 
it was aligned with our program learning outcome K1. Okay, so don't confuse yourself. We are using here SO and PLO. SO mean student outcome and PLO mean program learning outcome. If we are using SO, it means the SO is the term used by Abbott, student outcome. And PLO is the term used by the NCAAA, the program learning outcome. So in Abbott, we have the SOs from A to K. As you can say that SOA is equivalent to PLO K1. Okay, in uh, NCAAA, we use K1, uh, K that is knowledge, S we use for skilled, and C we use for competence. So this is the code for example, K1, K2, K3, S1, S2, S3, S4, and S5. So we have total 11 program learning outcomes. Three belongs to knowledge, five belong to skills, and three belongs to competence, okay? So uh, now we will again come to our point. This course learning outcome belongs to our program learning outcome K1. So achievement of this course learning outcome is 60%. From where we have taken this result, if we go up again, and you can see here, this is the result for CLO number one, this is 60%. CLO two, that is 80%. So we have to fill this information according to the alignment. And this alignment already given in our course specification in binder six, uh, sorry, eight. So CLO one, that is achievement is 60%. And this is aligned with our program learning outcome K1. CLO two achievement, it is 80%. And this uh, CLO is aligned with our PLO S4. Okay, similarly, CLO3, which is aligned with PLO K1 and K3. So result, achievement result is 100%. So at the end, we have to calculate for each PLO. So for PLO K1, the average is 66.67%. So we have to add them and we have to calculate the average. So these are three. So we have to add and divide it by three. Here we have only one, so it is 100%. So we have calculated the average. So this as achievement is contributing towards the achievement of our program learning outcome. So this information we need to fill. And the last thing is NCAAA course report. And it is very important that should be completed at the end of every semester. So now we will go to the, our course report and we will see what is in course report. So this is one sample course report which is filled. That is, we have to mention here the course title. We need to mention the course code, the program. This is bachelor and the department. This course report is prepared for the computer science program. So we have written here the department of CS. If it is for IS, course is related to the IS program. So we have to write here IS. Then we have to write here the institution. We have to mention here the academic year. We have to mention here the semester and who is the course coordinator for this course. And we need to mention the date when this course report is completed. Now we have to some sections we need to complete from A to G, uh, A, G. So we will see here what is A that is course identification. Who is going to teach this course and what is the location and how many sections and then we have to mention here the number of students starting the course it was 18 number of students completing the course it is 17 so this information we can fill from the results that you will receive at the end of the semester then we have the section b that is course delivery so in course delivery, the first subsection is course contact hours. Okay, so we have the lectures planned. It was 30 uh, hours and what is actual, actual is also 30. Sometime maybe if you have uh, less than your uh, plan, then you have to mention here. Okay, so maybe if it is planned was 30 and we have conducted 25. So we need to mention here. 
so laboratory or studio mean labs what were the how many contact hours we have 30 and what is the actual how many we have conducted and if this is the tutorial so we have to also mention here and then we have the total planned and actual then if topic not covered if Sometime your planned lecture hour, it was 30, but we have conducted 25. It is possible that some topic we missed. If it is not covered, then we have to mention here. Okay, how many topics? What is the reason for not covering? Okay, so what is the uh, extent of their impact on the learning outcome? We have to mention here. What is the compensating actions we have taken? Okay, so we have to mention here. Number three, in the uh, section B of course delivery, we need to mention here the teaching strategies. These strategies are similar that we already have mentioned in our course specification. So let's suppose the teaching strategy number one, associating the topic with the course learning outcome. So we have to mention here, <coughs> were they implemented? So I have tick here, yes. So if you face any difficulties, okay, for example, I have written here some difficulties. Most of the time, student did not participate actively during the lecture. So this is one difficulty the course instructor faced during the uh, delivery of the course. And then we need to mention the suggested actions, how we can improve this, okay? So for this difficulty, uh, it is course instructor have mentioned here, to improve the active participation of the student, it is desirable that class teacher must motivate them for participation and engage, engage them during a lecture by asking questions. So uh, the difficulty he faced and he also mentioned the course instructor, the actions. So for all the teaching strategies, which was mentioned in course specification, we need to mention here, and we have to write them if these uh, strategies were implemented or not. Okay, so you can see here that almost 12 teaching strategies it is given and it is also mentioned here the uh, almost four difficulties which uh, faced by the teacher and then the course instructor have mentioned the four suggested actions to overcome these difficulties. Number four, you have to mention in section B, that is activities or assessment method. Okay, so what are the plan assessment method we need to mention? So for example, quiz, we have assignment, we have a midterm exam, final exam, lab exam. This was implemented. So what are the difficulties you face? You have to mention here. And what are the suggested action you need to mention in the uh, course report? After that, we have the number five, the verification of credi uh, credibility of students' results. So we need to write here some method of verification. For example, you can see here the first method course instructor have written, the student grades and marks are accurately checked and reviewed by the reviewer in all midterm exam, quizzes, assignment, and final exam. Normal, this is the normal procedure. Uh, the for each uh, at the end of the semester before the final exam for each course there is a one reviewer and he will review all the grades that is given by the course instructor he will count maybe sometime there is a counting mistake so there is a method of verification also another method that question paper for all the assessment method are reviewed and checked by the course coordinator so that all the questions satisfy the course learning outcome. Because our main objective as a course instructor is to prepare the exam by aligning with our course learning outcomes. So course coordinator have the responsibility to uh, review the exams, either it is midterm exam, lab exam, or final theory exam to check the proper alignment, okay? So we need to mention here the method of verification and the conclusion also, whenever we use this method of verification. So what we have concluded, okay? So after that, we if we have some recommendation regarding the uh, verification of credibility, so we can write here some recommendation 
also the section c uh, contain the data regarding the student results so if in this course it was seven, 18 students and 17 student pass so it means you can see here 17 student they pass the course and one student he failed so from out of 18 what is the percentage passing percentage what is the percentage of failed student and also you can see here we need to mention here how many student they get a grade a plus b plus b and so on so we need to mention here the number of students who get the grades and what is the percentage after that we need to give the comments on student results okay so here the course instructor have mentioned some comments about the uh, results that we have achieved in the subsection one in the distribution of grades and also we have can mention here the recommendation uh, regarding uh, about the grades that we have students have received section d discuss about the course learning outcome achievement individually for example in this course there was having six course learning outcome this is course learning outcome number one and which is aligned with our program learning outcome k1 so our target was 65 percent and but what is the actual level this is 88.89 percent so what is the comments on the assessment result the target is achieved because target was 65 percent so we have to mention here that what is the course learning outcome what is the plo code assessment method we have used for assessing this course learning outcome so we have to mention for each uh, course learning outcome and you can see here the course learning outcome uh, 2.3 that is not achieved there the achievement level is 33.33 so actually it was 65 percent so this course learning outcome is not achieved so then we can write the recommendation about what we have here in the course learning outcome assessment result if we have any recommendation so we can write the recommendation here and you can see here the course instructor have written the recommendation section e that is related to the course quality evaluation so student at the end they also fill one online survey to evaluate the quality of the course so we have to put the data here for example we need to put the date of the survey okay so number of participants who participated in the survey as you can see here that this course was having three section theory class lab class and tutorial class so how many students they participated in theory class 18 students they filled the survey in lab class the only 10 students they filled the survey and in tutorial only six students they filled the survey so then you have to mention here the percentage of participation in theory clear class percentage of participation it was 100 percent in lab class it is 55.56 uh, percent tutorial class it was 33.3 percent and what are the results in theory class their uh, overall results was very good in lab class it was excellent in tutorial class it was excellent okay so then you have to write here the student feedback in term of strengths what are the strengths from the survey report you can get this information and this survey is it is available in our binder 7 in binder 7 we have this survey and from this survey we can get this information okay so this information we need to fill also we have to fill the area of improvement okay so we have to fill the suggestion for improvement okay, in this section. After that, if there is some other evaluation, so we can mention here the other evaluation, what is the strength? We have the area of improvement and the suggestion for improvement. And then at the last, you have to uh, give some recommendation on the first two components that is based on the student evaluation and other evaluation. After that, section F uh, discuss about the difficulties and challenges. If you face any difficulty during the semester, and this can be administrative issue, okay, it can be issue with the learning resources, 
it can be issue with the facilities so you can mention here what are the difficulties you face during the uh, execution of your uh, semester after that we have the section c that is course improvement plan so first section a subsection in the g is the course improvement actions okay so these are the improvement actions of our previous course report recommendation the we first column we have to give the uh, recommendation which was given in the last semester and then we have to mention here in second column action taken yes or no if you have written here yes then you need to mention as a course instructor what is the result of this recommendation when you have implemented and what is your comments you have to mention here so all this subsection one the course improvement action that is related to the improvement plan given by the course instructor in the last semester so we have to mention here all the recommendation and we have to give the status of implementation in term of yes or no and what is the result if you have implemented so what you have achieved after applying these recommendation so number 2 is you have to mention here action plan for the next semester so you have to mention here the recommendation that the course instructor when he will uh, start teaching the course in next semester what he has to do so these are the recommendation you need to mention here for this course instructor have mentioned only two recommendation it depends on the course instructor how many recommendation it can be four five it depends okay and then you have to mention here very important thing that responsibility for implementation if you have given the recommendation who is responsible maybe the course instructor or head of department or this is uh, recommendation is related to some resources and then it is very important to mention here okay so then the timeline you have to give here start and end date of your recommendation when this recommendation should be implemented and when it should be ended okay so what is the needed support uh, to implement this recommendation if you need any support if you think you need to mention here in this column okay so this is the briefly main component of course report we need to fill in this uh, during the course 5 okay so after that uh, thank you very much and i hope now you understand what are the different course file binders and how we can put the data into the binder so if you have any question so sure you can ask me anytime and see you in next video